99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. It's 307 on the 23rd day of November in the Lord's year 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is Max World. A special pre-Thanksgiving show. Now, you would think that if we're doing a show that has something to do with Thanksgiving... We would ask an obvious question like, what are you thankful for? Ah, That's boring, old. It's like kindergartners calling in and telling their teacher why they're their favorite. Today, I'm going to make your brain hurt. I know, it's the same thing as every day, but it's before Thanksgiving, so it's the pre-Thanksgiving, I'm going to make your brain hurt show. And I hope I can find somebody... Somewhere over the rainbow, someone who will agree with this theory. Luke Tim will join us today. Not that theory. I just want to introduce you to the guests. Luke Tim is going to be here from Living Faith Lutheran. And Joel Willoughby. That's right. Did I say that name right? You did. You did good. Joel is a uh, professional teacher at uh, Ankeny Christian. Ankeny Christian Academy. Academy. Yeah. Is, it, is there a difference between Ankeny Christian School and Ankeny Christian Academy? Well, the ac- academy is much more academic. So, no, there's no difference. <laughs> it's semantics. Well, I think, I think the academy is actually the whole scheme of, like, kindergarten through 12th. That's the difference. Okay. All right. And a school is what? Anything else. Maybe, no. just, maybe just a high school, a middle school, elementary school. But an academy is everything. It's, yeah. The whole gamut. So maybe I should change the name of the show to Max World Academy. That sounds Because it's the whole academy. That's right. It's the whole enchilada. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Roloff is here, which, surprise, he has nothing to do, so he decided to come in and sit down. And Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat, who's watching the chat, is here. And by the way, the chat is the Service Legends Truth text talk line at 515-809-0993. And as of right now, he's eight minutes and 38 seconds late. But at some point, Luke Tim will appear. And here's what Luke does. See, most people, when they're late, they like, Tippy toe. Think about Elmer Fudd with his gun, and he's trying to sneak up on Bugs Bunny. So he tippy toes. Hunting oh, wabbits. Hunting wabbits. I like wabbits. Luke Tim will be more like the, um, who's that dude that goes around and around and around? Tasmanian Devil. Very good. Boom. He'll be like the Tasmanian Devil, and he'll just come whipping in here one day, and there it'll be. Now, my guess is that Luke Tim is going to disagree with me on today's topic. And we may not do this thing for the whole two hours. I kind of want to talk about... Pam Washington's here, so I kind of want to talk about idols. We'll tie that one together later. But here's today's topic, and I want you to chime in at 515-244-0077. 515-244-0077. Or you can text us at the Service Legends Truth Talk text line at 515 809 Zero nine nine three. By the way, the first call bail bonds sponsors the text line and reminds you not to eat turkey and drive. I was telling you, it's only a one day deal, though. You can eat turkey today. You can eat turkey Friday, but no straining turkey through your teeth tomorrow because it's bad for driving. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Robert, are you ready? Yeah, for what? Turkey is what I was hoping he was talking about. No, for today's topic. Oh. oh. Yeah. You don't know what it is yet, right? No, I don't. Joel, do you know what it is? Oh, I yeah. was dying to know, and I don't know. Okay. You ready? Does God need us? Had my noon hour. This, this is how much show prep I did today. Had my noon hour <laughs> Bible study, <laughs> and it got to be about a quarter of one. And the noon hour, obviously, is noon to one. 
and we're going through 2 Corinthians 4, and somehow we got on this topic. It's Beth's fault. It's Beth's. Here comes the Tasmanian devil himself. He's actually whispering in. I know. Quietly. He's quiet. Well, it's because he hasn't heard the topic yet. As soon as he hears the topic, you'll hear, no, or wrong. <laughs> so we're sitting there at Living Faith doing our Bible study today, and Beth and I get into this conversation, which turned into a debate which turned into this round table, eight people trying to figure out what's the right answer to this. And it's real easy. Does God need us? 515-244-0077 will first uh, pull the uh, studio audience and see if there is some immediate thought on this before. Are we going to have... Uh, what do they call that? Contempt with before investigation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because some of the people in this room will just have contempt before investigation and say, no, he doesn't need us. He's God. He doesn't need anything. Can we, can we help clarify the question, though? Um, see, does, does, does God, God need, need us? us? For what, though? What do we No, what just we need about? us. In general? In no. general? No, yeah. I mean. At all? For anything? Yeah. I mean, we'll broaden it out. Later, we can cut it down into little pieces. Like, does, does God need us to to make the turkey tomorrow we could we could narrow it down and make it topical seasonal uh does god need us for uh black friday that could be an, another topic i'll tell you one thing he does need us for yes evangelism Ooh, so your answer would be yes for evangelism yes so does god need us the answer is yes yes Yes. Okay, good. Thanks for coming by, Joel. <laughs> 244 Bob, does God need us? No. Oh, Bob, Bob, the older you get, the more wrong you are. All right, Mr. Roloff. Yes. Does God need us? Yes. Okay. And uh, now, the star of our show... Coming in only moments late because he was working out or doing something. I don't know what he was doing. He's drinking something thick in what should be a water jug. What is that? Uh, it's a protein shake. Oh, it's a I protein. was working out. <laughs> protein shake. Protein shake. You know how I get my protein shake? <clears throat> we won't talk about that. Kit Kats from Max Office. That's yeah. how I get my protein. <laughs> All right, I, uh, Luke. I think those are low in protein. Are they low in protein? Yeah. But they make me us? feel good. <laughs> they do. Hey, will you two focus on the show here for a minute? What, we man? We don't need any rabbit trails. Do we need Let's you? Let's talk about protein. Where we get our protein? We could get our protein from uh, eggs. We could get our protein from Kit Kats, but we can't get it from almond and M's. Does God need our protein? Does God need us? He, he, well, ooh. <laughs> yes, he needs our protein. Does God need us? Uh, it's a bad question, actually. <laughs> that's the, that's the easy out. Easy that's out. The, that's the it's going to get complicated. <laughs> yeah, that's what the liberals kept telling me on Monday. I don't know, think that's the right question. <laughs> okay, well, when it's Luke's world, then you can ask the questions. But by the way, for you doing that to me, in the middle of your sermon on Sunday, I'm going to raise my hand and say, I don't think that's the right question, <laughs> Pastor. Go for it. Actually, all right, so... Um, Does I'm, God need us? Yes. The answer is yes. Wow. Wow. Let me tell you something. Eric the cabbie... Pastor Eric, Beth, uh, Gibson, and uh, Keith are all wrong because they thought you'd say no. Well, it probably depends. See, again, it is really not a great question because... What do you mean it's not a great question? It comes from my mouth. <laughs> well, then it's <laughs> certainly not a very clear question. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, it's, my name is Pastor Brooks, and I want to ask you a question. It's just like the question, it, could God make a ball so big he couldn't bounce it? It's it's that sort of question. Mm. It's it's where, because in reality, nothing is that isn't from the will, the design, and the the energy of God. God creates all things. Okay. So it's like, let me ask you this question. Can God create... Hey, this is not Luke's world. It probably should be, though. <laughs> hey, another <laughs> opening to make, Jebediah. Hey, I didn't ask Jebediah. Jebediah I'll get right on it. Do you think God needs us? Uh, the answer is yes. Wow. Made in the likeness and image of God. Wow, he's like a son to me. He's so smart. This is cool. Yes. And Pam, you want to throw out a yes or no? Does God need us? Yeah. Oh, man. I like this show today. This seems one side. <laughs> we got a lot Beth, of sheep here. Bethy is sitting right there at home and doing her physical exercise therapy thing that she does going, no, 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 no. 
Go ahead. You were saying. I was saying. Father Luke. <laughs> it's it's a C.S. Lewis has an argument that's along the same lines. He says, if it is a thing, then it's it is under the will and the design um, and the the creative. Uh, ordination of God. But if it isn't a thing, it's a nonsensical question. So if can God create a unicorn? Yes. No, is the answer. The King James Version has the word unicorn, by the way. I know. You know what a unicorn actually is? <laughs> Why don't you tell me? It's a um, it's a hippopotamus. Rhinoceros. I don't think so. Rhinoceros. That's what you yeah. mean. Rhinoceros. I, think it's, I think it's a one-horned goat. I think it's a unicorn with like, that's white. I don't even want to go there. It depends it's on how many rainbows and butterflies around it. Rainbows come it's, out of its butt. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to say it. Thank you for saying it, Luke. Not a problem. It. That's what wanted to come out of my mouth, but I stopped myself trying to be the adult, but it didn't work. <laughs> Colorful. <out. Right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be the adult. Well, let's go down and Luke around. We don't yeah. need any more adults. That's right. Colorful fluctuation is sort yes. of my thing. Okay, go back to the thing. So, because we can conceive of it, does it mean that it exists? So, God doesn't create things that don't exist because he never created them to begin with. You understand? So there's not, there's no, no, no new creation after day six, and he took a pause for the cause. Well, just because we have in our mind envisioned or created a thing, does it mean that God is bound then to be able or not be able to create it? See what I'm saying? It it doesn't exist. It's something that we conjured in our head, but God is the one who conjures things with His own word. So just like any, why did you mention unicorn? God made unicorns. They're called rhinoceroses. <laughs> How about a leprechaun then? Uh, short, short Irish, Irish people. people. <laughs> Tommy Sacco. Yeah, go. There's just more politically correct terms for that. That's all. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. We're going to take our first break here, and uh, this might we may have to come up with another topic because I really thought I I really thought that I'd get some blowback. Now this can get interesting. Just give it some time. Yeah, because the answer is actually no. If you ask Wait a minute, it in a, I already have you down as yes. Because you asked a dumb question. There's no wow. hanging chads on this ballot. You can't change your <laughs> The mind. answer to your dumb question shouldn't actually count. Okay. Coming back <laughs> to your voice, I want to hear 515-244-0077 live in Max World on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Lockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 21 minutes after 3 o'clock, 321 on the 23rd day of November in the Lord's year 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy. Look at this. 32 shopping days till Christmas. It's hard to believe. Have you bought anything yet? I did buy one thing. I got conned into it. You got conned into it. <laughs> what, what do you mean you got conned into it buying? It sounds like I it was, was for a woman. It, my wife? <laughs> yeah. Well, so she's listening, and in, I don't want to tell what it is. Oh, okay. Well, is here. it that Porsche that I saw you getting on? It <laughs> well, was the that, big red bow that on was the, the one? top? Yeah. yeah, I think that was the New one. Porsche. Got oh, it. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right, because she'd never get to drive it, would she? <laughs> It right, was the me, Hot Wheels. That makes sense. <laughs> let me tell you who the players are. Uh, Joel Willoughby is the new voice you hear. Joel is a uh, instructor, teacher, professor at uh, Ankeny Christian Academy. Teaches apologetics and the Bible to like fifteen-year-olds. But <laughs> so he's way above your level. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a funny guy. Funny guy. I, I sit at the feet of Mac. No, no. Luke Tim. Because you tripped? <laughs> <laughs> Senior pastor at Living Faith Lutheran. The service is at 9 o'clock every Sunday. And, of course, Chris Roloff, Grouchy Pants, and Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, watching the chat. And we are being produced by the incredibly trained, talented, young man. And you, know who he, you know who Jebediah reminds me of? Me. <laughs> Does he have a closed head injury? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it might be it. something like that. I don't know. <laughs> here's the uh, here's the question of the day, and then I've got two callers. I'm going to take uh, Justin from Ankeny first, and then Colin from Ankeny. So both of you, hang on. I'll get you in on this break. Here's the question of the day: Does God need us? And so far, everybody in the studio except Bob's got it right. <laughs> Everybody said yes, except Bob. And we'll hear why Bob feels the answer's no later on. And Well, actually, you said the answer's no if you asked the question right. Correct. Because I asked the question wrong. Right. Okay, you just said correct and right. I left. must be doing something left. <laughs> Let's go to the phones where uh, Justin is standing by. Justin, you're live in Max World. How are you doing today, Justin? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. So does God need us? I feel like he does. But can I say something to Mr. Willoughby? Uh-oh. I know exactly who this is. You do? Is this one of your students? <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Okay. This is a pass-fail moment, you realize. <laughs> Justin, take it easy here, brother. Your grade is on the line. At, at the grade, <laughs> I'd like to say I love you. Oh, there, there you go. That's good. And, and Mr. Willoughby? <laughs> yes, sir. I feel like as the days are going to an end and also your hairline, um, you have... Been a great teacher. Have been? What ha what's happening? <laughs> Is there yeah. news that I don't know about? You've been, you've been such a good you've been such a good student, Justin. It's a shame to see you die. Would you like boiled in oil or tar? <laughs> That's funny. He's a good guy. All right, Justin, so do you have a question or did you just want to suck up to the teacher? <laughs> Uh, maybe just to suck up. You know? <laughs> he gets an A for that, I'm telling you right now. He's right, honest. Let's go to uh, Colin in Ankeny. Colin, you're live in Max World. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good. So does God need us? Uh, I believe so. Yes, yes, he does. All right. Tell me why. Um, without us, he wouldn't. I would say sort of what uh, Joel said. Um, we need to evangelize. Okay. Are you guys both keeping score over there? Look yeah, I am. Go. I'm writing it down. So, Colin, let me ask you this question. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Because obviously I think you're brilliant and I want to learn more. Oh, yes. Uh, please ask. So, <laughs> evangelize. So, God can't evangelize? Oh, uh, he can, but I think it's our Christian duties to do so ourselves. As Mr. Wilby teaches us every uh, second period. Oh, 
Another one. I know this is the. What did you do? Line these kids up at the payphone and give them quarters? (laughs) Gee, money. What's a payphone? (laughs) (laughs) That was good. All right. So, so Mr. Willoughby is your teacher. Uh, yes. yes, On a scale of one to ten, ten being brilliant and one being I don't know why I'm in the class. What is Mr. Willoughby? Careful. Uh, you know. Somewhere between there. I'd, I'd give him a seven. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere between one and ten. Hey, seven's yes. the number of perfection, so... Uh, yes, yeah, somewhere between one and ten. That's actually better than ten. Can you imagine if Bo Derrick's <laughs> producer had said, ah, somewhere between one and ten, you know? I don't know. Let's make it a seven. That movie, you never would have gone anywhere. Who's seven. Bo Derrick? What? Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> I'd just like to congratulate Mr. Wilby on following his dreams. It's a real inspiration. <laughs> All right. Thanks, hey, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate you, you coming on. Did you offer them cash or something? For- <laughs> I, I just told them I, this is the place I'd be on air. All right. All right. Well, we've got more people on the line. Everybody that comes up from Ankeny, I'm going to assume they're a plot or a plat. <laughs> plot. Plant. Plant. That was the word I was looking for. Well, the plot was that it'd be Shrubbery. planted, right? That's Yes. So it right. all makes sense. 515. Shrubbery. 515-24. all herring. 515-244-0077. Those are the, uh, that's the number you can call to get on the line. Or you can uh, text, uh, no, uh, Mr. No, Bob, Monster at the Cat in the Hat, watching the hat at 515-809-0993. I do have them here. You ready? Yeah. Do I need my wife? I love my wife. If I lost my wife, I would miss her terribly. I enjoy her company. I enjoy almost everything about her, but I don't need my wife for me to exist and to be alive. What, what's he married to God? I think he's just talking about the sweet fellowship. The relationship, yeah. Oh, that God would oh, love. Oh, okay. Loves that fellowship with us. Okay. And All another right. one. You ready for another one? I am. Let's take two. Okay. Rapid fire. Interested to hear Luke's nuanced answer because omnipotence and a need for anything border on philosophical contradiction. In order to avoid that, we need to expand the question a little. Uh, Agreed. Write down that phone number because I think that's Eric. It's not (laughs) Eric. Oh, it's not? You know who it is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Well, so the... The reason why I said it's a bad question is, um, as Joel was kind of saying earlier, that um, need for what is a better way to, you have, you have to finish that question, right? Um, but no, I think God does need us in the system he's designed. He designed a system that requires us to do evangelism. It requires us um, to be the, the hands and the feet and the mouthpiece of the gospel. He, he's designed something that does require our participation, so as the as Roman says, uh, how can they hear unless there is somebody sent to proclaim? Well, it predicates on the assumption that there must be something to hear, and that hearing must be a means by which the gospel is proclaimed. So if it, if it is this message that needs to be delivered, then he requires the messengers to deliver it. But you, if you back that up and say, God, could God have created a different system? I mean, he didn't. Is the point? Could he? In in the if you're thinking omniscience and omnipotence, um, yes, he could have created a different system by which to do all that needs to get done. But as C.S. Lewis says, it's folly to to think about those things and, and sit around and pontificate on it because he didn't create a system like that. So, so you're in telling, that sense, no. So in your what I think I hear you saying is that he needs us because that's the system he set up. Had he set up a different system in which he he took full advantage of himself or herself, whatever you want to do there. Yeah. He wouldn't have needed us. And I would also extend that to say, does God need us is a different question than does God need you? Uh, does God need you is probably always a yes. No. No? No, it's not. He's saying as an, as an individual, you know, if I stop serving God, God's not destroyed. Right. But mankind as a whole... Yeah, I mean, yeah. take Chris for a second. Chris is a is a oh, profound. Just, just for a second, that's heavy lifting. That's yeah, yeah. That's good. Chris, he's been working out though, so he can lift me. <laughs> he is. Uh, we all know Chris is a profound disappointment to God, right? Well, yes. We're all in agreement that he has fallen down terribly on his job of everything. Everything. Right? Everything. Yes, everything. Absolutely everything. everything. He's mm-hmm. never done anything right ever. Absolutely. If there's something that God needs to get done that is is on a list for Chris to do, and Chris doesn't do it. Does he need Chris to do it? Is is, is he required yeah. Chris? Will it not get done? Well, no. If, no. If God wills for it to get done, Joel can do it. Or Ron. 
Uh, I don't think Ron can do it. Oh, yeah, Ron can do anything. <laughs> I don't even know who Ron is. I'm just making stuff up. 515-244-0077. Let's go back to Ankeny where Alex is standing by. Alex, you're live in Max World. Does God need you? Um, I believe he does. He does not need our work. And in Acts 17, it says, The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands. As though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. So, uh, which class do you have our Professor Joel here in? Uh, eighth grade. You knew it, didn't you? <laughs> okay, so you don't think God needs us, and you think that's proven in Acts 17. Is that what I hear you saying, Alex? Well, he wants our glory. He wants us to, he commands us to worship, serve, give, and obey. For our joy. Okay, so let me ask you this, Alex, because I know you probably know the answer to this because Joel's your teacher and he teaches you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kid laughed. I like that. Um, did God create us to glorify him because a third of the angels stopped doing it? And he knew he couldn't depend on the angels, so he made man who he knew would somehow figure out how fallen and broken they were and they would only turn to worship and glorification for God. Wow. <laughs> He's an eighth grader. What are you doing? That is, <laughs> well, here, you talk to him in eighth grade speech. Yeah, Alex, that was the correct hey, response. No. <laughs> wow. Very good. Now, um, yeah, what did you say? I got lost in that well, question. I, okay. <laughs> that, was, that was just went on forever. Yeah. You're in eighth grade, I take it. <laughs> so, so, all right, so why does God need us? Well, we could say one way he needs us is to glorify him. Because the angels in heaven that he created to do just that, that's their only gig is to glorify him. A third of them walked off the job and went into protest. It's not their only gig, to be fair. Okay, fine, muddy the waters. <laughs> so he created man because he knew that man would eventually, because we're fallen, stumbled, and broken, that we would eventually come to our knees and glorify him forever and ever. So are we, are we the alternative to angels to glorify him because some failed? No, you're saying? No, uh, alternative, I don't know if I like that word alternative, but we can, we can use the term alternative. I mean, it had, to be pretty, it had to pretty much suck when the third of the angels walked off the gig with Satan. And so God must have thought, hey, what if they all go? And so I'll create man and I'll give them free will, but I know they'll choose me because they want to glorify me. Can, can I weigh in on your question? Sure. Okay. So now if you ask me the question, does God need me? I say absolutely not. So you change your mind in well, 31 wait a minute. minutes? No, because you're, you're clarifying like Luke was talking about. You're making your, your real question known here. God doesn't need us in order for God to exist. God exists whether we exist or not. God doesn't need us to glorify him. He's glorified whether we exist or not. God doesn't need the angels to be glorified, et cetera, et cetera. God is perfect and holy and has everything he needs in and of himself without us. But as Luke was talking about, he did create us. So that's the world that we live in. He did create us. And the Westminster Confession, question number one, why did, why did, what's the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever, right? So we're here to glorify God, but he doesn't need us to be glorified, but that's what we're for. He, does, he doesn't need us to glorify him, you mean? He d no, he's glorious. God is glorious. Done. With nobody glorifying him. Right. Correct. He is glorious then why, on his own. Then why do we have to glorify him? Oh, because it's a wonderful joy that we are given the, the honor and the privilege to glorify God in our lives. We were created to bring him more glory. He showed forth his glory in, in creating the world, in creating me, in creating the, the world around us. All right, I've got Kathy on the line, and I've got Connor on the line. Uh, they're going to be our next callers coming up. And Jill just emailed me and said, the guy who doesn't need his wife should probably remain anonymous. <laughs> Good job, Alex, by the way. Kathy's husband. Did all right. <laughs> We're coming back live here on The Truth. Does God need us? That's the question today in Max World. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, hy V and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. 
I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate is free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. It's 3.38, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News. And then back live in Max World. I don't, I don't think we're going to wear this question out. I mean, I actually didn't know if we'd get a whole hour done with it. And then I realized everybody but Bob was right. And um, <laughs> now you're finding out your question is dumb Poor and Bob. wrong. No, I'd like to hear I'm, what Bob I'm not says. finding out what my question is wrong. I'm finding <laughs> out that my question is actually quite God inspired. Because I think God wants us to hear today why he does need us. Because all of the humility of Christians sometimes stinks. Because we were too humble. We, 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 we fall below the point of teachable. My definition for humility is teachable. And we fall below that because we, we think that there are things that God does not want us to know. And I don't agree with that. I think God wants us to know everything. Because eventually mm. he gives us everything. Again, how you ask that question... Why are you so critical of how I, I'm telling you, Sunday in church, I'm raising my hand. I'm just, I'm going to pay you back. I'm coming into Luke's world. All right, let's go to the phones where I think it's Kathy from Dallas Center is on the line. Kathy, how are you? Do you, I'm fine. Do, do, does God need us, Kathy? Absolutely not. I'm sorry. I had to disagree with you, Matt. Okay, uh, uh, that's fine. I don't mind being disagreed right. with. Okay, good. Um, no, um, God is. Uh, a lot of what he said, God is glorious, God is glory, he encapsulates all glory. He doesn't need us to glorify him. And he just created us because it pleased him to do so. We, um, and remember when Jesus said that uh, if, if these people were not praising me, even the rocks would cry out. <laughs> he doesn't even need humans. He can use any of his creation to evangelize but 
but he doesn't need us. All right, Kathy, once again, I think you were the smartest person in the room, except <laughs> ah, you're wrong on that one. Thanks, Kathy. All right, let's go to... Uh, Rude. That was a good answer. It was actually not a bad answer. It was a good yeah, answer. It was. I don't, think, I don't think it was right either, but... That's okay. Connor from Ankeny. Connor, you're live in Max World. What do you think? Does God need us? I'm going to answer that question with a defiant no. Not just a no, but a defiant no. Yes. Why are you being so defiant? Because... Your teacher I taught believe, you to. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that we are made to glorify God. And sure, we are like, you know, that's like we're made to glorify God. Yeah. So I don't think he needs us, but he wants us. Okay. So, Connor, let me ask you this. Why would he create this entire thing called the human race and everything else that goes with it and all the pain and stress and structure and disappointment and heartbreak that we get just so he can be a little more glorified when in fact he doesn't need us to do it at all that doesn't sound like a very loving caring god because it's all part of his plan oh good because i'm the dad that's why that that's what that answer means right right <laughs> so, so Matt, God, God is asking, our benevolent dictator. Huh? He's our benevolent dictator, right? He's it, yeah, it's, right. It's in that sense. So, so you're asking him to answer for God. That's what he's doing. Well, that's what you're asking him to do by saying, "Does God does God need us?" Yeah, you're asking him what what God why he did what he did. Yeah, but he changed it really well. He said <laughs> he said he doesn't need us. He wants us. I think that is a great answer. No, he needs us. Why, why, why would God create something that he only wants? Because he wants it. <laughs> well, if, he doesn't, he, but he doesn't want do for anything. He doesn't want for anything. <laughs> right. So if God needs us, that implies that God is incomplete without us. So God no, lacks. No, no. Listen, listen. Do you like cold water? I like cold water. I don't okay. need it. You don't need cold water. Right. But you have a way to have cold water by making ice cubes. Yep. So you want cold water. Yep. So you created a way to have cold water because you want cold water. But I don't need it. Yeah, I think you just I think you just crushed your own analogy, <laughs> man. You just like I just but, listened to you break yourself down. You just answered your own question. If I need cold or if I want cold water, I need ice cubes. Very good. But so I don't, if God wants to be glorified, but He doesn't need to be glorified, then why did He create us? Because He wants us. Well, He just then He would just need He would just oh, now need I'm, to now creation. Now I'm back to confused. <laughs> yeah. well, I thought I was tracking and forget it. Now I don't know what you're talking about anymore. Joel and I are like he on would, the same page here. He would it. only need creation because He was glorified with all the angels. Um, but and a then third He wanted of them walked to, out on strike. And it did not take anything from him. He, he then, then did not. Then why did he create three thirds instead of just two thirds? He wanted to. <laughs> three thirds. What God wants. <laughs> three, three thirds. He created he said three thirds. I'm going to need a calculator now. <laughs> All right. In Max World, fractions are funny. Connor, thank you very much. Let's go to Monty in Granger. Wait, wait, wait. I, this one's not your student. I know this. Monty, how you doing? You're, he's one of my listeners. He's going. Monty's going to agree with me. Watch this. Monty, are you ready? Does God need us? Are you sure you want me to answer this? Yes, because I know you're going to I know you're going to take my side. Partially. Okay, turn down your radio, okay? I'm getting some feedback. Okay, the previous answer was the, was the best answer you've had so far. Ooh, one of my no, students. No, God does not need us, but he wants us. Once again, we're back to the point of obedience. And when God calls us to do something, we need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and be obedient. And in that obedience, we will be blessed. Now, the bad thing is, if we are not in obedience, God will find somebody else that will be obedient, and they will get the blessing. So in the fact that we have missed out, we have missed out in one of God's great blessings, whatever it may be. So that's, that's where the fine line is. Now, if you want to get into the fine-tune arguments, go ahead. That was great. I'm just getting my butt kicked today, aren't I? I really like that answer. Monty, let me ask you this. What if nobody, 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 times infinity won't glorify God? Okay, you ready for the answer? 
I'm ready, brother. I'm hanging okay, on to the and, yellow and rag. And God's foreknowledge and predestination. Oh, a Calvinist. Good. No, Those no, are Bible no. words. No, notice I said foreknowledge Those before are... I said predestination. Actually, and, he does, and he does do both. But he knows that there is somebody out there that will eventually obey him because he knows that he do that he do that he do has that he <laughs> does have some spirit filled Christians out there that knows the first commandment from Jesus Christ is to obey my commands. So what you're telling me is like the American electorate, it's rigged. <laughs> you really think that? <laughs> that now now we're going down a rabbit hole. You don't want me to get started on that. Okay, foo foo. <laughs> All right, Monty, I appreciate it. Let's take one more call before we get to the break. Jeff from Bondurant. Jeff, you're live in Max World. Jeff, pray tell, please be one of the wise ones in the world. Does God need us? Uh, no. <sighs> uh, but my question for you, Mac, is do you need God? Oh, yeah. Why? Why do you need God? Because without it, I'm broken, and I'm a human, and I make all kinds of stupid mistakes, and I'm not able to have g- give forgiveness, and I'm not able to give grace, and I'm just a I'm a... I'm a piece of feces. So you're dependent upon God. Yes. So but, if God was dependent but. upon us, <laughs> would that make him God? Would he be God if he was dependent upon humans? But, Jeff, I'm only dependent on him if I want to have eternal life. I'm not dependent at all on him for this 60, 70, 80 years on the fleshy earth. Wrong. Yeah, wrong. That's you're not, Thanks, you're not Luke. dependent That's upon bad. him for your next breath. <laughs> you're not bad. dependent upon him for your next meal. My whole conscious existence on Earth doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Hey, that, the microphone, radio dude. I, I didn't think that you wanted that on. But. Well, I, so you're those, saying your, your entire words. conscious existence on this side of eternity doesn't matter? Only eternity, which is based on this existence, matters? That doesn't make sense. Is this, is this Joel's world now? Are you making up questions? I'm just trying to clarify what you said. Well, well, hey, Max. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with the question that you asked that eighth grader was that you put too much into that question. You yes. were putting your thoughts and your answer to that question. You were setting him up so that he would agree with you. But if you made it so easy for him to not agree with you, because you put so much into that question. I like this guy. He's a good guy. You need to ask simple, direct, short questions from now on. Oh. <laughs> All right, Mr. First Family from Bondurant. See if I let you on the radio again. <laughs> See you, Max. I love you, Jeff. See you later. All right, Eric and Steve, you're lined up. You're our next two calls live here in Max World. Does God need us? We're coming back live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, hy and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 
350, 10 minutes for the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then we're back for another hour. I don't know if we'll stay on this question or not. It seems to <laughs> be generating a lot of interest. Hey, listen, you, you were gone last week, and Eric uh, preached. Why don't you let me preach this weekend, and I'll preach on why God needs us. Oh, because it would take an hour for the sermon, and nobody would know the answer at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, the question... <laughs> and there'd be commercial breaks, which is really weird in church. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages here on Living Faith Radio. All right, um, so here's my guest, Joel Willoughby, who is a, a professor at Ankeny Christian Academy. Luke Tim, who's the senior pastor at Living Faith Lutheran Church at 142nd and Hickman. Services at 9 o'clock. Uh, Chris Roloff, our station manager, Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat watching the chat, and of course, Jebediah. We have two calls we're going to make sure we get in. I've actually got time for probably three, but let's start with Eric from Ankeny. Eric, you're live in Max World. Does God need us? Yes, I do think that God needs us. Yes! This is an A student! Okay, <laughs> tell us why. Okay, well, I mean, the sole purpose that he created us was that we could worship him because he is the most high, so. But would he not be the most high if we didn't worship him? But nobody would know because nobody would be there to say, you're the most high. That's our own disobedience. Right, but if if we had not been created, if God chose not to create, he would still be the most high. Well, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to witness it, does it make a sound? It's more like if it's only, it's always best. I don't think it makes a sound. I think it more makes like a screech, kind of like, you know, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a it, good answer. Screech. Uh, screech was one of my favorite characters, too, Eric. Well, I, mean, you. I, I do study conspiracy, so I am... I, I, do that on, I do that on a daily. So. Okay, so you're, you're, you wear tinfoil hats? Actually, no. No, okay. No, Better prepare. I wear a tinfoil suit. Okay. <laughs> All right, Eric. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to Steve from West Virginia. Steve, you're live in Max World. How you doing? Wow. Hello. Uh, no, I don't think God needs us. Uh, that's uh, human emotion. I mean, God says mm. his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Mm. Uh and I've read through the Bible a lot. I've never read anywhere where God says, I need you to worship me or I need you to repent. The only things I see is I command you to repent. Uh, worship me because I am the Lord, your God. Um, and that's, that's my view of it. I mean, the man needs God. You know, that's So you don't think God needs us? He, he truths us. To serve him. Uh, well, it's an interesting you know, distinction he just made. It he, he he's talking about need as a, an emotional condition versus need as sort of this existential required to exist. Sort of are are we required for God to be, or does God have a need for us? Like he feels like no, God needy. doesn't need us to for him to exist. Well, see, that's yeah, is, a good God clarification is, uh, to make. The wow. omnipotent one, he's self existent. Uh, he's omnipresent. He's 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 everything and everywhere. You know, his eyes are everywhere. I mean, I doubt he needs us. He created us because I guess I mean, no one knows really the inner mind of God unless you know the Holy Spirit reveals a lot to us. But I mean, there's a lot of questions. Even some prophets have asked, but was never answered by God. He merely answered them by giving them a question. Job yeah. was an example. Yeah, it, it's uh, a dangerous game in general to um, personify God by trying to project human emotions and feelings, which we don't fully even understand because we're marked by sin and, and we don't even understand fully our own emotions. And then to try and identify and grasp an emotion for God that is a complete human experience uh, on our part it really doesn't make sense to... So I, I thought we were asking more of the existential question, but if we're asking the question about feeling, is God sitting around needing for us, like, you know, I really have a need to be with my wife, then then no, God certainly doesn't need us in that regard. Yeah, I mean, uh, God is, you know, he's 
I mean, I'm flabbergasted when I think about it. I mean, you get time itself. I mean, we understand time to a limit, but, I mean, we can't imagine a, a world without time. I mean, we, we can't push these human emotions on God. I mean, he has love, hate, I'm sure, because he said, you know, Jacob have I loved, the Esau have I hated, I mean. But even those are, are more of a, of a human expression of a divine um, condition, or, or it's it's our human reflection or interpretation of something that right. isn't necessarily a, a human style emotion as we would understand it from God. So yeah, it, we really well every human emotion is a God emotion. I mean, Correct. we're in God's image. I mean, until yeah, I don't I mean, buy that. So, <laughs> so, 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 I mean, I assume that means you know, I, I wouldn't. I don't know if God really has a form. He's a spirit. Uh, I mean, that's not the question, but, you know, it's just it's just a flabbergasting question, really, that, you know, does God need us? <laughs> it is. I mean. Well, well, well you know what, Steve? I appreciate your call. You uh, feel free to call in any time, and we'll just keep asking that question. Now, I think we just came upon an interesting question. Yes, we did. Does God, is every human emotion a God emotion? Name one that's not. Hate, fear, greed, lust, gourd. I think, I think, well, lust isn't a, an emotion. <laughs> That's a <laughs> desire. You were 16 once, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> if you have lust, you will emote. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but is lust is not now? an emotion. <laughs> all right. So, oh um, all right. So, all right. We're coming up to the top of the hour. <laughs> And it's time to take our top of the hour news break with Salem Radio Network News, and then we'll be back. And um, does God, here's here's another question. And here's, here's an interesting one. Does God idolize us? I, I want you to think about that. When we idolize something, we replace it with God, right? We make it higher than God. If we idolize money, we're putting money before God. If we idolize food, we're putting... Sorry, Chris. If we idolize cars... (laughs) Night. Did you see that? That was was smooth. Wow. That's rough. Does God idolize us? Because what does he replace us with? Absolutely. What is over us? No. No. Nothing. Here's another one. There's nothing over us. If you were to say God idolizes us, that means God's putting us above himself. And he worships us. That's, That's messed up. Is that messed up? It is messed up. Okay. A little bit. All right, let's go back to lust. <laughs> a, a little bit? Hey, so here, with well, fear, I think fear was the best one that was mentioned. Yeah. That's right, I win. Jesus had fear in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, he asked the Father if this cup would pass. I don't think he had fear. I think he had fear. Okay, I- that's our question as we come back next hour. Maybe it won't last very long, but is every human emotion a God emotion? And I want all those students of Mr. Willoughby's to call back in and answer is every human emotion a God emotion? Even jealousy, yeah. We'll talk about it. Hey, thanks for listening. Haven't told you this lately, but I love my job. I really do, especially on days like today. And I can't do it without you. So I need you to listen to 99.3 The Truth. Are you leaving? Okay. <laughs>